Hi, hope you're doing well. Today I'm going to be reviewing the brand new album from Laro titled Supervision. I hope you enjoy. The album kicks off with this really groovy track. I love the keyboard licks, the small rushes of electronics, and the rickety drums. I think the progression of the track is pretty good as well, especially halfway in where there's this blissful instrumental passage that seemingly works itself back into the main groove. I think it's great. Topically, I think the track deals with the striking passage of time, mentioning a lot that the 21st century is nearly gone, but you know, what can you do? I think LaRoe's performance here is great, I think her vocal delivery is super endearing, and I think the hook is also great too. Overall, I just think it's a great opener to this album. Uh, this is another disco-inspired Ruby instrumental. I love the funky guitar and the breeziness of the track. I think LaRoe herself is vocally is fantastic. I love the somber topic of being uncertain or unsure of one's actions, trying to see if you can validate it in some way or try and overcome it. I think with LaRoe's vocal delivery, it comes off as genuinely impactful. And then midway through the track comes this progression where a mantra is repeated over and over until the song is over. And the way it constantly builds with these vocals constantly going in and over each other, arranging an emotional delivery is amazing. The payoff is incredible and it left me amazed with just how this track really came together. It's easily my favorite on the album. Uh, this is another tropical disco track that's very pleasant to listen to, especially, especially that funky ass guitar groove later on in the track. Once again, LaRoe is great on this track. I love her very shy and direct delivery. I think it adds a lot more variance to the track than I expected it to. And I really can't say anything more about this track. It's just another infectiously groovy one. Uh, I like the video game-esque keyboards to start off the song before it ventures into another sensual, tropical disco track with more of like a jungle feel to it. Um, LaRoe has a more proud vocal delivery here, which I think works in an aspect to bring spunk into the mix that the previous uh, three tracks didn't. Um, overall, it's just, the hook is solid, the verses are good, the groove is good. It's another solid track, though. I, I do think it goes on for a bit too long. Man, at this point of the album, uh, this is where I feel like the breezy tropical disco sound that really, really cemented itself firmly in the first half just overstays its welcome. This track is definitely more mellow than the previous tracks that came before it, but it feels so empty. The songwriting here is so basic and flavorless, not to mention it like it makes itself more bland of a listen because just of how excessively long it is. There's no progression on this track. The repetition feels incredibly grating compared to the other four songs. I don't think it's bad, but it has no staying power for in comparison to the first half of the record, which affects the second half, the entire second half. Uh, this is another track that kind of exudes the same issue I had with the previous one. I think the instrumental is good, uh, but it feels like a hollow variant of the first half instrumental, if you ask me. Uh, the vocals, once again, there's nothing wrong with them on the album. It's just like there's no excitement to them on this track in particular. Nothing here really catches my ear. It really sounds like something the Row herself would actually put out. Once again, it's not bad, but it, it just bores me in the long run. I liked this track at first when I heard it, but uh, upon my second listen, I actually found it to be quite forgettable. Um, I thought the basic instrumental was kind of weird compared to everything else on the album, even though in the second half, this is kind of the theme it presents. Um, I thought the refrain was actually interesting. I think LaRoe hits a different vocal range that I didn't hear her hit previously. Aside from that, I think the songwriting is okay, but man, it goes on for way too long. Like, the last minute seemed so unnecessary and was such a flavorless ending to the song. Uh, this track actually uses the piano, which I thought would have added something fresh to the album's sound palette, but eventually it becomes more of the same thing. Not to mention this track is like seven minutes long, and it had no reason to be. I like the songwriting on the track, I think the lyrics are interesting, but I think the way LaRoe constantly repeats the lines over and over before moving on to the next verse really lessens how meaningful they are in the long run. Once again, she's fine, but she isn't doing anything different from the other tracks to make it stand out. Overall, it's just a very weak closer to a very, very weak second half. 
After Lero's last album, I was quite excited to hear what she would have coming next. I thought the sound that she utilized on that album was pretty great. Here, however, this album is kind of a tale of two halves for me. You have the first half, which is strong because the album presents the first half in such an enjoyable fashion. The production is great, the rhythms are fantastic, the grooves are nice, vocals are very passionate and are very discernible. The second half seemed like it was trying to sabotage itself. Basically by going away from everything the first half did. The tropical disco sound palette of the album is really nice at first, but as it goes on it becomes less and less adventurous, becoming a lot less enjoyable especially since these tracks go on for so long for no reason. Aided by the fact that the songs have really weak structure in the second half as well, there's really nothing dynamic or interesting about them anyway. This is definitely Rose's least interesting album to date, but that being said, the first half is so good that I could not stop listening to it. I still go back to it over and over again. And it's just such a shame that the second half took such a plunge, because I think overall, the first half did showcase how creative Laura could be. The second half, she became way too complacent, in my opinion. I give it a...